सो वेरी गुड इवनिंग गाइस सो आई गेस वी आर ऑल असेंबलिंग सो टुडे वी हैव द फिफ्थ सेशन ऑन मैग्नेटिज्म इन मैटर सो यस्टरडे वी हैड लॉर्ड ऑफ डेरिवेशन इन यस्टरडे क्लास एंड टुडेज क्लास राइट वी विल नॉट हैव दैट मेनी डेरिवेशन इट्स मोस्टली थियरिटिकल डिस्कशन okay so we'll proceed guys uh, like yesterday quickly to recap recap right what we were uh, uh, covering in the last class uh, we have looked at the uh, the concept of uh, equilibrium of uh, the dipole in uniform magnetic field remember what we talked about we talked about the two cases one is what the idea of stable equilibrium and uh, sham okay so we talked about what the idea of stable equilibrium and the idea of unstable equilibrium what is stable equilibrium if uh, the dipole is a uh, oriented parallel position then that uh, represents what parallel position to what the uniform magnetic field means if uh, m bar is parallel to b bar right the dipole moment vector is parallel to b bar that represents what stable equilibrium unstable means it is anti parallel theta will be equal to 180 so it will be what if it is anti parallel uh, means that is unstable then we talked about the oscillations of the magnet in uniform uh, magnetic field so oscillations we have found uh, the expression for the uh, time period of these uh, oscillations okay so i hope uh, you guys are able to remember the formula t is equal to what 2 pi root i by m into b i represents moment of inertia m represents the magnetic moment and b represents what b represents the field then we talked about the potential energy of the dipole in uh, magnetic field what is the potential energy u formula u is equal to minus mb cos theta or minus m dot b so these are the things that we were covering in the last class guys so hope we are all on uh, same page now okay now we'll get into uh, today's uh, discussion so here uh, for most of the uh, i mean you know derivations and all these things that we have done so far right we have been talking about uh, this bar magnet where we have uh, the south pole and north pole uh, and uh, the dipole is uh, uh, taken as an uh, straight uh, segment of the rod so this is basically what we call as the bar magnet but uh, we don't have just this one type of uh, permanent magnet and by the way bar magnet is what it is one type of permanent magnet i'm sure you know uh, you might have seen this kind of thing these kind of you know magnets right they will be called as what oval shaped magnets what do we call them as guys oval shaped magnets and this one right this is a very uh, important one horseshoe magnet and uh, this one uh, we have talked about it it is used in the construction of uh, moving coil galvanometer the horseshoe magnet is used in what the construction of the moving coil galvanometer and of course we have uh, magnetic needle this uh, we use in the magnetic compass then we have uh, these type of magnets they are called as cylindrical magnets okay they are called as cylindrical so here right for the bar magnet we know uh, one side will be what south pole other side will be what north pole magnetic needle means one side is north other side is south horseshoe magnet one end uh, will have what north other end will have south cylindrical also same thing one end will have north one end will have south Oval well, also same thing, but uh, when it comes to these other ones, right? Like the disc magnet or the ring magnet. So ring magnet will be having what the shape of a ring. Disc will have the shape of a disc, and this one is the arc magnet. So these kind of magnets, right? They can be created in different ways. So where they will have the north pole and where they will have south pole, right? They can be created in different. ways how they can be created in different ways i'll just give you a representation like say if we have a disk magnet right uh, we can have a disk magnet magnetized along the axis means what let's say this is north means this will be south or we can have a disk magnet which is magnetized diametrically means if one side is north this is north the other side is going to be what south so we can magnetize them in different ways similarly the ring also right 
we can magnetize it axially means this is not means this will be what south or we can magnetize it diametrically this is not means this will be south so these other ones right even the arc also so remember if you have an arc magnet right generally this is how the arc magnets are magnetized so if you have an arc magnet right the inner side will be one type let's say the inner side is north the outer side will be what south the inner side is north means outer, outer side will be what south like that we can have uh, i mean you know different ways of magnetizing uh, these uh, arc magnet or uh, the disc magnet or the ring magnet the other ones are quite uh, straightforward if you talk about a bar magnet right what you are going to have one side is north mean other side will be south okay so we can have different ways of magnetizing especially in the case of these uh, uh, disc magnet or the ring magnet or uh, these uh, arc magnets so what i showed here is one way the concave side what we are putting here the concave side is magnetized as what north and the convex side is magnetized as what south okay or there can be another possibility what is other possibility we have an arc magnet like this exactly one side you can have the south one side you can have the north that is one way of uh, magnetizing it okay so these are the ways uh, different ways of uh, magnetizing the uh, substances in getting the permanent magnets okay so this is uh, important guys the use of permanent magnets because they will be helpful uh, in creating uh, the uh, magnetic field uh, which is going to be uh, constant in terms of uh, the value as well as uh, the direction so generally these uh, permanent magnets right they are used in producing what uniform magnetic fields so wherever we require to produce uniform magnetic field we'll typically use what the permanent magnets okay so we'll go on to the uh, okay so arun you are asking question will the charges flow inside the magnet see what is a magnet it's a it's a material so if i have a permanent magnet made up of iron so good number of permanent magnets are made up of what iron so they will conduct current so iron the magnetic properties are different conducting properties are we have to see them totally different way okay so when you talk about the conducting properties what we will be focusing on whether they are free or mobile electrons or not that's it magnetic property is a different phenomena so if you look at these metals right so we'll see in some time we'll see the examples of uh, different type of magnetic materials then uh, if iron is having magnetic properties right then iron can be still conducting because it is having free or mobile electrons clear so this is about the types of uh, permanent magnets guys and uh, this one is uh, also an important thing because whenever we talked about a magnetic dipole so we have been using the concept of magnetic moment what is the formula for the magnetic moment we said magnetic moment is equal to what magnetic moment what is the formula for the magnetic moment we used magnetic moment is equal to what pole strength what is the magnetic moment formula we talked about pole strength into effective length of the magnet pole strength into effective length of the magnet okay so in fact if you can recall right in one of the previous classes we said for normal magnets also if the i mean you know the actual length is capital l or two times small l whichever you represent the uh, effective length right uh, will not be the total geometric length if the geometric length is uh, say for example capital l then uh, the effective length will be 5 by 6 times of the geometric length but this uh, we don't really i mean you know uh, uh, use this uh, formula most of the times what we do is uh, we will take the geometric length to be equal to what effective length because uh, the poles right they are not usually located on the end points they are not exactly on the end they will be a little bit inside okay so but this this point uh, we will not i mean you know really consider it we will approximate uh, the effective length of a bar magnet to be equal to what geometric length but when it comes to these other type of magnets right remember guys if you have a line joining the uh, north pole and south pole that's what we'll be calling as magnetic axis for any permanent magnet right the line joining the north pole and south pole is called as what magnetic axis so if you look at you know what is this distance along the magnetic axis you can see for this uh, this can be like what 
it's a, a semi it's a semi ring it's what guys it is a semi ring so here what is the uh, effective length of this particular uh, magnet if uh, this circular uh, i mean you know shape is having a radius r then the effective length will be equal to what two times of r the effective length will be equal to what guys two times of r whereas the geometric length right the geometric length will be equal to what i mean you know the the boundary of that uh, semicircle what will be the boundary of the semicircle i mean total circle perimeter is equal to what 2 pi r right semicircle means it will be equal to what pi into r semicircle means it will be equal to what guys pi into r okay so for the permanent magnets right we need to understand the difference between what is the geometric length and uh, the effective length so remember guys for any magnet right the magnetic moment formula is what magnetic moment is equal to pole strength into effective length so in this case right in this case of uh, semi ring uh, type of magnet so what will be the formula pole strength if it is m means m into 2r will come that will be the magnetic moment what will be the magnetic moment of this uh, semi ring shaped uh, magnet it will be equal to what pole strength small m into 2r clear guys so this is how we are going to find uh, the magnetic moment of different shapes of magnets always we have to consider what we have to consider the effective length okay now uh, while we have talked about you know uh, the uh, derivations in magnetism or about uh, the dipole the uh, field produced by the dipole along the axial line field produced by the dipole on the equatorial plane the torque acting on the dipole potential energy of the dipole i have been reiterating always that we have similarities between the terms in electrostatics and the terms in magnetism like you know the role of electric field here in case of magnetism is played by what magnetic field and you know in all these uh, electrostatic formula right we have k what is the k value 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and in magnetism the constant k value will be equal to what mu naught by 4 pi if you compare both these formula right what we can see is the equivalent term so in case of electrostatics if you have this 1 by epsilon naught what is the equivalent term here the equivalent term in magnetism formulas will be what mu naught the equivalent term for the 1 by epsilon naught is equal to what mu naught so all the formula whatever the formula we see right like say for example if you have a single charge what is the field because of charge electric field 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square this is the field because of a single charge what is the this is the electric field by the way electric field because of single charge what is the magnetic field because of a single pole mu naught by 4 pi m by r square m is what pole strength m is what pole strength okay so if you see in this formula right wherever we have this uh, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught in case of that what we are having mu naught by 4 pi so the equivalent term for 1 by epsilon naught will be equal to what mu naught so epsilon naught is called as what the permittivity of uh, vacuum or free space and mu naught will be called as what what is mu naught mu naught is the permeability what is mu naught permeability of uh, the vacuum or free space this is what this is permittivity what is this permittivity okay and uh, wherever we have uh, the electric dipole moment right if you have uh, electric dipole electric dipole is characterized by what its dipole moment what is the dipole moment of the electric dipole it will be equal to what the charge times uh, length of the dipole similarly in case of uh, the magnetic dipole right what we have we are basically having uh, the magnetic moment so in case of uh, the electric dipole we have what dipole moment dipole moment is what it's a vector quantity direction is what from the negative charge towards the positive charge in case of uh, the uh, bar magnet or uh, i mean you know a permanent magnet what we have we have magnetic moment okay magnetic moment will be having a direction from the uh, south pole to the north pole because the equivalent of uh, negative charge is what south pole 
equivalent of positive charge is what north pole okay and here what is the formula if you take uh, the length of the dipole to be 2l both the cases here what is the value of this p is equal to q charge into 2l here uh, m value is equal to what pole strength into 2l we will have similar formulas okay so this is about the similarity in terms of the dipole moment then we have uh, similar looking formulas what are the similar looking formulas if we have uh, the electric field at a point on the axial line or electric field at a point on the equatorial plane whatever the terms we have right in the case of uh, uh, magnetism or because of the permanent magnet we have analogous formula what are the things guys because of a short dipole right what is the field uh, at a point on the equatorial uh, plane it will be equal to what we can see it will be what 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught minus p bar by r cube it tells us two things one is what that you know the uh, field is in opposite direction to the uh, dipole uh, moment direction okay and also the field is what it is proportional to 1 by r cube. In case of uh, the magnetic dipole, what is the formula we can see? It will be what? Mu naught by 4 pi into minus m bar by r cube. So, we have analogous formula. This is what the electric field uh, because of electric dipole on the equatorial plane. This is what the magnetic field. What is this formula for the magnetic field? at a point on the equatorial plane because of the magnetic dipole. Similarly, we have these formula guys, you know, I am just revising already we derived these things. Okay. So, because of uh, a short dipole at a point on the axial line, at a point on the axial line, right. If you have electric dipole, what is the uh, electric field formula? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 p bar by r cube. If you have a magnetic dipole, the field produced by the magnetic dipole, electric dipole produces electric field, magnetic dipole produces what magnetic field, the field formula is what similar formula mu naught by 4 pi 2 m bar by r cube. Okay. So, we see that uh, the field value will be in same direction as the uh, electric dipole moment in case of the electric dipole and the magnetic field will be in the same direction as what m bar in case of the magnetic dipole. So, all these are you know the analogous formulae we have in uh, the electrostatics and uh, magnetism results guys. And if you have electric dipole in uh, a uniform uh, electric field, what will be the torque it experiences? The torque experienced by the electric dipole will be given by what torque is equal to P bar cross E bar. What will be the torque value given by? Torque will be equal to what? P cross E and the torque acting on the magnetic dipole which is kept in a uniform field. The torque acting on the magnetic dipole which is kept in a uniform field, what will be the formula? M cross B. This derivation also we did. And the potential energy in case of uh, electric dipole will be equal to what? Minus P dot E or minus P into E into cos theta. In case of magnetic dipole already we did the derivation, what is it guys? minus m dot b or minus m into b into cos theta. Okay. So, what I want you guys to just look at this is, uh, we have analogous formulae between the electrostatics about the electric dipole. So, all this is what the formulae we have in the electric dipole case. And the second bracket is what? This is the formulae we have derived in case of the magnetic dipole. Guys, you know, I am telling you again, all these derivations right if you learn them in one place like if you are learning them in the case of magnetic dipole uh, the uh, formula will be like a repetition in the case of electric dipole if you are learning it there in the electric dipole means this is going to be like a repetition okay so what i want you guys to i mean look at this is even it is not like we are going to remember the formula two times we have almost analogous formulas in uh, the electrostatics and magnetism clear guys so this is about uh, the similarity in terms of the formulae between uh, the electrostatic terms and the 
magnetism comes okay now uh, all this is you know the uh, discussion on uh, what we have been uh, uh, continuing so far in today's session right we will mainly try to cover uh, the magnetic properties of the materials so how or rather why different materials are having different magnetic properties now if you look at uh, fundamentally inside inside every uh, i mean you know substance right we know that substance are made up of what molecules or ions so if you go one level below means what will be there molecules are basically made up of atoms so at an atom if you observe right the orbit where the electron is revolving so this is a concept we have discussed already so if we have an uh, electron orbit an electron orbit is uh, equivalent to what if there is an electron orbit the electron orbit is equivalent to a dipole because we can measure what is the magnetic moment of this we can measure what is the magnetic moment of this uh, electron orbit now uh, what happens is we will see i mean when we go into the further discussion that uh, in some atoms right there will be unpaired electrons unpaired electrons means what so if say pairing means i mean you will learn about this in chemistry generally when you are trying to fill the electronic arrangement right in an orbital you will show the electrons like this okay so one an arrow like this and the other arrow like this if you keep two electrons means we will say what the orbital is paired up otherwise if you just have one electron right so we will say this is what unpaired electron unpaired means if one electron is going clockwise means other is what anti clockwise so if there is unpaired electron this unpaired electron orbit right is uh, equivalent to what a dipole and every dipole will have what every dipole will be having magnetic moment every dipole will be having what magnetic moment okay and if you think about substances generally right you know so if you look at uh, any substance there are different ways in which these uh, uh, i mean you know the atomic magnets what do we call them as guys by the way atomic magnets these atomic magnets right they can be arranged in different ways so we'll talk about this when we go to the uh, the examples of the magnetic materials but it is quite possible that uh, we will have what the atomic magnets arranged in different different orientations if we have a material in which uh, there is net magnetic moment if you have a material in which there is a net magnetic moment okay and uh, for such a material right we will be defining a quantity called as magnetization so if you have a material which is having net magnetic moment so if you take uh, the net magnetic moment per unit volume if you take net magnetic moment per unit volume then we are going to be calling that quantity as what magnetization now not every material may be having the magnetization only some of them will be having the magnetization so how that magnetization comes if we have the uh, atomic magnets atomic magnets means what if there are you know atoms with unpaired electrons each of these atoms is like what having some magnetic moment we will call them as what ato atomic magnets and under some situations what might happen is these atomic magnets might uh, produce what some net magnetic moment in that material so if they are producing net magnetic moment in that material means we can define a quantity called as what magnetization what is magnetization magnetization is measured as the net magnetic moment per unit volume this is the definition we can just look at this so what is the formula for this net magnetic moment divided by the volume and what is the si unit of magnetic moment ampere into meter square divided by volume means what meter cube so the uh, one meter will be remaining so the si unit of uh, magnetization what will be the si unit of magnetization ampere per meter so if we have uh, some magnetic moment in that uh, material by its properties okay 
because of the atomic magnets existing in that substance then you know we'll define what magnetization for that material what is the magnetization magnetization is nothing but it is a measure of net magnetic moment per unit volume and what will be the SI unit of the magnetization it is ampere per meter now uh, what happens because of this magnetization inside the materials is there will be some field produced so because of the magnetization so wherever there is the magnetization in the material there will be some field produced and this field this is a magnetic field produced this field we will call it as the field produced by the magnetization what do we call it as the field produced by the magnetization we will indicate this with the symbol b subscript m what is this b subscript m is what so if we have a substance where there is a magnetization so we are going to be uh, looking at what is the field produced by the magnetization so the field produced by magnetization right is uh, represented by what b subscript m and this is basically representing what the field contributed by the magnetization and this will be proportional to the magnetization m value so the field produced by the magnetization right will be what proportional to m value means higher the m value means the field because of this also will be higher so if you look at the relation between them right this will be the relation what will be the relation field produced by that uh, magnetization will be equal to what mu naught times what is mu naught mu naught is the what is mu naught mu naught is the permeability of uh, the vacuum or free space the field uh, produced by that magnetization will be equal to what mu naught into m okay so just make a note of this formula guys so what are we discussing here if you look at a substances right so substances uh, we'll see i mean you know so when we go to the different types of magnetic materials we'll be able to understand this more clearly but think of it uh, if there is unpaired electron orbit that is like what one dipole and uh, these dipoles are also called as what atomic magnets what are these dipoles called as atomic magnets or we can also call them as atomic dipoles now if these atomic dipoles are giving rise to some net magnetic moment then you know the net magnetic moment per unit volume is measured as the quantity magnetization what is the s unit of magnetization ampere per meter and this magnetization will be able to produce a field inside the substance this field is called as what the field produced by the magnetization and what will be the relation the field produced by magnetization will be nothing but proportional to the magnetization so what will be the formula so we can look at this as uh, the first formula we are going to see so now we are going to have a set of formula guys at the end of this we will be able to arrive at some results okay so the field produced by the magnetization bm will be equal to what mu naught into m okay so let's keep this as the first equation now uh, whenever we apply some uh, magnetic field the external magnetic field let's say for example uh, we are applying some uh, external magnetic field b naught this will be what you have a current carrying coil you have a current carrying wire i mean you have a solenoid you have a toroid so any of them they can produce what if you pass current means they can produce the uh, magnetic field for every magnetic field right we will define a term which is called as magnetic intensity for every field we will define a term called as what magnetic intensity so magnetic intensity will be dimensionally just look at this uh, concept guys it will be dimensionally similar to m the magnetic intensity so magnetic intensity is defined for what so we are applying some magnetic field through a particular place let's say the applied magnetic field is what b naught for every magnetic field right that we are applying we can define a term called as what magnetic intensity this will be represented by the symbol h and this is going to be dimensionally same as the magnetization so the relation is if you are applying a field b naught right then the corresponding h for this uh, field will be given by the relation b naught is equal to what mu naught into h so if you are applying a field b naught b naught is what the applied field for every field we apply we can define a term called as what magnetic intensity so you can see this will be dimensionally similar to what magnetization and what is the relation between the applied field b naught and h it is what 
B0 is equal to mu0 into H. So let's keep this as equation 2. So what is the relation between the two? B0 is equal to what? Mu0 into H. Okay. So this is what is the magnetic intensity. So we are getting some new terms and definitions guys. You have to keep, I mean, you know, making a note of it. Now, uh, before we go and discuss about uh, the results or the conclusions with regard to the magnetic properties of the materials, let us uh, take the example of uh, a solenoid and we will try to understand uh, the magnetic properties of the materials by using this. It is a very common example which is called as what? The solenoid example. What is the solenoid example? See, if a solenoid is there, right, we pass some current. Now, if we pass some current, inside the solenoid right what is the magnetic field produced by the passing of current that's what we are calling as what b naught so b naught is equal to what mu naught into n into i n is what number of turns per unit length i is the current we are passing now if inside this solenoid right we fill this is called as what the core of the solenoid inside the solenoid we have that core if this core is filled up with some material normally what will be there inside that there will be the air or you know uh, vacuum is there but if we fill that core with some material it may be a, a soft iron it may be some some material then inside that right now we are going to be having what the applied field as well as if there is some magnetization of the material if there is some magnetization of material, right, there will be also the field because of the magnetization. So, the total field, right, will be what? The field that is produced because of the passing of current plus the field that is coming because of the magnetization. So, look at this, guys. Normally, what we have because of the passing of the current, we get what? The applied field. Applied field is equal to what? Mu naught into N into I. This already we derived. But uh, if there is a magnetization for the material, then uh, the total field inside that uh, solenoid will be now given by what? It will be given by the applied field value B0 plus the field coming from the magnetization Bm. The total field value is equal to what? We are representing total field by the symbol B. B is what the total field? B is equal to what? B0 plus Bm. Basically, you know, so we are getting some field because of passing of current. Inside that core of the solenoid, we keep a material. If the material is having some magnetization, right, there will be a field that is going to come because of magnetization. So, the total field will be equal to what? The field you apply B0 plus Bm. Now, here uh, already we have uh, talked about it. Bm is equal to what? Mu0 into M. And uh, B0 is expressed as what? Mu0 into H. What is H? The magnetic intensity of the applied field. What is M? magnetization what is m magnetization okay so if you replace the b0 by mu0 into h if you replace bm by mu0 into m what we are going to get the b is equal to what mu0 into h plus m b is equal to what mu0 into h plus m so keep this as uh, equation 3 guys so we are going step by step so in the end of it right we will get the final results of this uh, uh, I mean, you know discussion which will help us to understand about the magnetic uh, properties of the materials so b value is equal to what guys mu naught into h plus m okay now uh, if you look at uh, how this uh, magnetization is coming generally what happens is uh, these uh, atomic magnets generally the atomic magnets right they will be in different different orientations these atomic magnets though they have uh, magnetic moment they will be in different different orientations if you apply a field means what is generally seen is uh, like you know these dipoles we have discussed about it what will be the tendency of the dipole dipole will try to align itself in the direction of the applied field but you know i think somebody was asking in uh, the previous class what if that field applied field is very uh, weak what happens is the orientation of these uh, dipoles right will be hindered because after all dipoles are like what atoms or molecules right so their orientation will be hindered by because of the physical interactions so strong field means what it will be able to make sure that 
most of these uh, dipoles are what oriented parallel to the applied field a weak field means only some amount of this will be oriented and this orientation right is going to give rise to what more value for the net magnetic field per unit volume means we are going to get what more magnetization if most of these magnets are orienting right we are going to get what more magnetic moment per unit volume means we are going to have what higher value for the magnetization so what is uh, experimentally observed is for majority of the substances right they follow what is called as an linear relation linear relation between what between the h because h is associated with what h is associated with the applied field so the magnetization value will be directly proportional to what h the magnetization value is directly proportional to what h means we apply a higher value of the field we will see that the magnetization also will be what more and uh, these two are what quantities having same dimensions so if you make this into equation the constant here which we will uh, spell it as chi so we will uh, write it like you know a curved x but how do you spell it we will spell it as what chi this chi is going to be what it's a dimensionless constant why because the lhs and rhs are what having same dimensions so chi is going to be what it's a dimensionless constant and this will be called as the magnetic susceptibility what is this chi guys it's an important magnetic property of the materials what is it called as magnetic susceptibility it's a dimensionless quantity and what it basically represents or indicates is it measures how a magnetic material will respond to the external field means your h is based upon what the h is based upon the b naught right because what is the relation b naught is equal to mu naught into h this is from the applied field m is what it indicates how these you know magnets are orienting the atomic magnets are orienting means what the uh, chi it represents what how a magnetic material will respond to the external field so depending upon the chi value right we will know what will be the relation between m and h depending upon the chi value we will know what is the relation between the m and h just to tell you i mean you know how these chi values will be there for the different types of materials right we look at the types of magnetic materials like on one side we have these you know diamagnetic substances where we can see the chi values all of them right look at these chi values what are these chi values they are all negative what are these chi values for the diamagnetic substances the susceptibility magnetic susceptibility values are what negative negative but they are not very large negative they are small negative we can see they are not like minus 500 or minus 1000 what are the values minus 9.8 in 10 power minus 6 minus 1.6 into 10 power minus 5 they are small but negative on the other hand we have paramagnetic we will study about these types of materials paramagnetic right look at this for paramagnetic the susceptibility values are what they are all positive positive but are they like very high no you can just check these values they are what 2.3 10 power minus 5 they are small positive and after some time we will see that there is one more type of materials we will call them as what ferromagnetic materials for them the susceptibility values will be large positive values for them the susceptibility values will be equal to what large and positive so these are you know their susceptibility values right chi value can be negative that happens for what one set of materials we will call them as what diamagnetic materials we will understand why it will be negative and all that but yeah so for the diamagnetic materials right the chi value will be what negative for the paramagnetic chi will be positive but very small amount of positive for the ferromagnetic we will talk about them also that is the third type what is third type of materials ferromagnetic for the ferromagnetic right the susceptibility value will be what large and positive for the ferromagnetic the susceptibility value will be what large and positive so this is about the types of uh, magnetic materials okay now we will just finish the discussion that we are having so what are the two formulas we are having so far we said b is equal to what mu naught into h plus m this we got this is you know if you remember 
I will call this as equation 3. B is equal to what? Mu naught into H plus M. Then just now we said uh, for most of the materials, right, which we say are linear relation. Okay. So what we have M itself is equal to what? Chi into H. M is what? The magnetization and uh, chi is what susceptibility of the material. H is the magnetic intensity of the applied field. So if we just substitute it right in place of uh, let's call it as fourth equation substitute in place of m keep the value of chi into h just look at this guys complete this part so what we are going to have so mu naught into h plus chi into h so h will come out what we are going to have mu naught into 1 plus chi into h this 1 plus chi we are representing by a quantity called as mu r Remember guys, you know, in electrostatics, right, we use these words epsilon naught, epsilon r and epsilon. Epsilon naught is what? The permittivity of the vacuum or free space. Epsilon is what? The permittivity of the medium. Epsilon r is what? Epsilon r is the relative permittivity. What is this? Epsilon by epsilon naught. What is the relative permittivity value? Epsilon by epsilon naught. Correct. Just like that, we are also going to have similar, I mean, you know, discussion here. Look at this. This 1 plus chi, right, is going to be now onwards called as mu subscript r. It will be called as uh, relative permeability. What is it going to be called as, guys? Relative permeability. And then what we are going to have, see, b is equal to what? mu naught into mu r into h b is equal to what mu naught into mu r into h the product of mu naught into mu r right is going to be now called as what mu which is the permeability of the material so from material to material this mu value is going to be what changing so what is the relation mu of the material is equal to what mu naught into mu r if you look at this right what will be the mu r value what will be the mu r value? Mu by mu naught. We can see this relation is what? Just like the way we have talked in the case of the electrostatics. What is the relative permittivity? Permittivity of the medium by permittivity of vacuum. Similarly here also, what will be relative permeability? Permeability of the medium by permeability of the vacuum. So what is the final conclusion we are having guys? For every material, right? For every material, uh, we are going to be talking about susceptibility. And based upon the susceptibility, we will know what is the relative permeability of the material. What is the relative permeability formula? 1 plus chi. What is the relative permeability formula? It will be what? 1 plus chi. And uh, as you can see, the uh, value of uh, chi, we have seen in the previous table. Chi is what? Negative for the diamagnet, but small negative. So which means what? The value of this uh, relative permeability right for the diamagnetic for the diamagnetic what will be the relative permeability value it will be less than one diamagnetic means because you know the chi is what small negative right to to one we are adding something small negative means it will be what coming less than one whereas you know for the paramagnetic for the paramagnetic right the chi is what small positive means the relative permeability value will be little bit more than one paramagnetic means it will be little bit more than one so that is how we will understand the difference between the terms and uh, what is the overall b value overall field inside the substance now is equal to what mu naught into mu r into h in other ways we can say it as what mu into h what is mu permeability of the medium what is mu permeability of the medium clear guys so the magnetic properties of the materials right they are understood in terms of what chi and mu r the magnetic properties of the materials they are understood in terms of what chi and mu r of course they are all related right what is the relation between the two 1 plus chi is equal to what the relative permeability 1 plus chi is equal to what relative permeability so when we want to compare different materials right in terms of magnetic properties how we are going to compare them we will compare them by using what either the chi values of the materials or the uh, relative permeability values of the materials okay 
Now we'll just take a look at this question, guys. Let's see who can get the answer for this. It's a straight uh, formula substitution kind of question. So I'll just read out the question and wait for some time. Look at this, guys. A solenoid has a core of a material with uh, a relative permeability 400. Means what is given to us? Mu R is given to us was, at, was, as what, guys? 400. Relative permeability is given as what? 400. The windings of the solenoid are insulated from the core and carry a current of 2 amperes. What is the current inside the solenoid is what 2 amperes. If the number of turns is 1000 per meter means they are giving us small n value also. What is small n value? 1000 per meter. What is the number of turns per unit length guys? 1000 per meter. Calculate H and B. What do we need to find guys? We have to find H and we have to find B. Okay. So, I'll just give you the first hint guys. So, to know the H rate, we should first know what is B naught. What is B naught? B naught is the field created by the passing of current through solenoid, right? What is the field produced by solenoid? B naught is equal to what? Mu naught into N into I. What is B naught guys? Mu naught into N into I. And remember, what is the relation between B0 and H? B0 is equal to mu naught into H. What is the relation guys? B0 is equal to what? Mu0 into H. Means both sides the mu0 is cancelled. So it will give us H value is equal to what? N into I. What is the H value? H is equal to what guys? It will be N into I. N represents what? Number of turns per unit length. I is what? Current. Means what? 1000 into 2 which is what guys 2 into 10 power 3 and remember what we said this will be unit wise dimension wise same as what magnetization what is the unit of magnetization guys ampere per meter what is the SI unit of magnetization it is what ampere per meter okay so any answers guys for the first part first part is what we have to find what is the H H is called as what H is called as what guys the magnetic intensity. What is the relation? The applied field B0 is equal to what? Mu0 into H. But applied field is the field inside the solenoid right by the passing of current. Whose value is equal to what? Mu0 into N into I. So we equate both the formulae. Mu0 is cancelled. So H value will be coming as what? N into I. N is what? 1000. And I is what guys? N is 1000. I is equal to 2 amperes. So what is the answer for this? 2 into 10 power 3. What is the answer guys? 2 into 10 power 3 ampere per meter. What is the answer? It is what? 2 into 10 power 3 ampere per meter. This is what? This is the value of H. Check it guys. Not sure if you are able to get the answer or not. So in these problems right guys, I will just list down the important formulae. Whatever we discussed so far. What are the formulae we have? The applied field B0 is equal to what? Mu0 into H. Field because of the magnetization is equal to what? Mu0 into M. M is what? Net magnetic moment by unit volume. And then we have uh, the relation. Magnetization M is equal to what? Chi into H. Finally, 1 plus Chi is equal to what? Mu R. And total field B is equal to what guys? mu naught into mu r into h otherwise we also write as what mu into h total field b is equal to what mu naught into mu r into h otherwise it is equal to what guys mu into h okay so we are getting some responses guys okay so h we are able to get it h uh, h most of us are having what is the answer guys Okay, so H is what 2 into 10 power 3 ampere per meter. Now the question, uh, next question is what B value. What about the next part guys? Next part we have to find the B value. So just as we are going through these formulae right guys, just make a note of the formulae. What are the formulae? Important formulae we have here. I have just copied all the formulae so that you know it will be of help for us while solving problems. Next thing what we need to find guys? We need to find the B value. 
I gave the formula already here. What is the formula? B is equal to what guys? What is the B value? B is equal to mu naught into mu r into h. What is the B value guys? Mu naught into mu r into h. Okay. Mu naught is what? 4 pi into 10 power minus 7. SI unit everything. Mu r is what? Relative permeability right. They are saying it is 400. Into h is what? Already we found the value guys. 2 into 10 power 3. Everything is the SS system. So the field is going to be coming what? This will be coming in Tesla. The field value will be coming in what guys? Tesla. So for the first, uh, what is the answer for the first uh, first part guys? First part, H value is equal to what? 2 into 10 power 3. Okay. Second part we are doing, B value. Okay. So this is what guys? 4, 4 is 16, 32. Okay. 32 pi into uh, this is what 10 power 2 10 power 3, 10 power 5 into 10 power minus 2 okay pi is what 3.14 so if you see right this 32 into 3.14 will be almost close to 100 this will be almost close to what guys 100 so 100 into 10 power minus 2 is what nearly it will be equal to what guys 1 tesla check it so if you simplify it right yeah so we are getting it Somebody is saying 0 0.32 pi, that's also correct. Otherwise, what we can say, if you just look at this multiplication, right, 32 into 3.14 will be approximately equal to what? 100. So, 100 in 10 power minus 2 will be 1. So, approximately, what is the answer, guys? I think some of you are able to get it. K7 and all that. What is the answer? It is approximately equal to what? 1 Tesla. So, just make a note of this formula again, guys. B naught is equal to what? Mu naught into H. BM is equal to what? BM is what? The field because of the magnetization is equal to what? Mu naught into M. And what is M? Magnetization. What is this guys? The net magnetic moment inside the material divided by the volume. Then we have one more relation. The magnetization is directly proportional to H. The constant here is called as what? It's a dimensionless constant. It is called as what? Magnetic susceptibility. Okay. This represents what? How a material responds to applied field. And uh, based on the chi value, magnetic susceptibility value, the uh, relative permeability will come. What is it? 1 plus chi is equal to what? Mu r. So total field B is equal to what? Mu naught into mu r into h. Otherwise, we can also write it as what? Mu into h. Okay. So this mu is nothing but what guys? Mu is the permeability of any material. Mu is equal to what? Mu naught into mu r. Okay, so these are the important formulae we have guys in terms of the magnetic uh, properties of the materials. So we can expect some questions on this and the questions on this will be just simple substitution type of numericals like whatever we have right. The same kind of questions can be expected. So uh, all the you know 5 or 6 formulae we have, we just need to be you know clear in terms of the formulae and then we will have straight substitution kind of questions on this. Clear guys? So this is about uh, the results on uh, the magnetic properties of the materials okay so most of us seem to be getting the answer for this now uh, just to carry the discussion forward right so what we are saying we are talking about the uh, magnetic properties of the materials so far we are seeing the results or the i mean you know the relation between the different terms Finally, what we said, we came down to these two terms, importantly. What are these two terms? Chi and mu r. Chi is what? Magnetic susceptibility. And mu r is what? The relative permeability. So, based upon the uh, experimental values, right, what we saw, diamagnetic, the uh, chi value is small negative. Accordingly, the relative permeability what? Because, uh, what is the relative permeability value? 1 plus chi, right? the relative permeability value will be less than 1 means uh, mu because what is the formula for mu mu is equal to what mu naught into mu r we are multiplying a number number less than 1 means the mu value will be coming as what less than mu naught for the diamagnetic materials mu will be coming as what it will be coming as less than mu naught okay now when it comes to paramagnetic right chi is positive but small it's what between 0 to 1. Chi is positive but small. So accordingly, the relative permeability will be here more than 1. 
because what is the formula 1 plus chi means we are adding some po small positive number so relative permeability will be what it will be more than 1 relative permeability will be what guys it will be more than 1 and with the relative permeability is more than 1 look at the formula what will be the mu value mu naught into mu r right mu r is more than 1 means we are multiplying it with a number more than 1 so overall mu will be what more than mu naught diamagnetic mu will be less than mu naught paramagnetic mu will be more than mu naught if you come to ferromagnetic so we'll discuss about you know all these three types of substance in detail guys ferromagnetic means for them right the susceptibility will be what very large as a result of it what is the relative permeability formula 1 plus chi right if this is large means mu r value also will be what very high in comparison to 1 like generally it will be in the range of you know like in the previous problem we saw right what is the relative permeability we said 400 it can be even in the range of thousands the relative permeability right it can be even in the range of thousands accordingly the mu value what is the formula for mu mu is equal to what mu naught into mu r right if you put mu r as thousand think about it if you put mu r as thousand right then the mu value is much much more than mu naught it will be thousand times of mu naught i mean if at all we have a substance where the relative permeability is thousand right then what will be the mu value there mu will be equal to thousand times of mu naught clear guys so this is broadly in terms of how we look at the substances into the diamagnetic paramagnetic and then ferromagnetic clear so this is you know here uh, the maximum thing we can expect is uh, we will not get much questions this is only for our understanding of it maybe you know we may get some theoretical questions only like you know they will ask if uh, the chi value is between 0 to 1 what could be the nature of the materials paramagnetic diamagnetic ferromagnetic any of them like that we can have some questions okay but now we'll come to another important area of discussion guys uh, what is actually happening inside the substances because of which they are behaving as diamagnetic or paramagnetic or ferromagnetic broadly right we talk about these three and there are two more categories which we will uh, probably cover it at later point of time because strictly in, in this chapter right we don't have them in our syllabus but maybe sometime later right we'll try to cover them so here we'll talk about three types of uh, magnetic materials diamagnetic paramagnetic and then ferromagnetic then there are two more types uh, which is you know uh, ferrimagnetic and anti-ferromagnetic so we'll talk about those two types uh, later but let's just uh, discuss on these three types first is what the diamagnetic materials how do we understand the diamagnetic materials if you look at this diagram right i think i don't need to tell you what is the diagram representing guys what is the diagram representing it is actually representing what it is representing the uh, field lines what is this representing it is representing the field lines okay so if you look at you know a diamagnetic material which we are keeping in a region where there is a magnetic field what we see is uh, the field lines are going away what are you observing here the field lines are actually going away they are not getting concentrated into the material they are moving away from the material so this is one of the characteristic feature of the diamagnetic substance so diamagnetic materials right in fact they will be repelled generally if you take a, I mean, you know, a magnetic substance and take it close to iron nails or iron filings what do we observe we will see that the iron is getting attracted but if you take it close to a diamagnetic substance right what is going to happen the diamagnetic substance will be what repelled so generally how do we notice that any substance is diamagnetic right if you have a non-uniform magnetic field non-uniform means what the magnetic field is changing these diamagnetic substances right they will have a tendency to move from the strong field side to weak field side so how the diamagnetic materials are going to move they are going to move from strong field region to weak field region that's why we said what they are repelled by the magnetic field these will be what mildly repelled not you know very strongly repelled but they will be mildly repelled by the magnetic field so if you look at what is the reason for the diamagnetic materials the reason for the diamagnetic materials is first of all these materials right remember uh, when we talked about these uh, atomic magnets concept we said what 
if there is an unpaired electron orbit then you know it will have what some magnetic moment but think about materials where uh, the all the electrons are paired there are no unpaired electrons at all means in these atoms right the individual atoms they will not have any magnetic moment so diamagnetism is basically for the substances uh, where there are no unpaired electrons so the diamagnetic substance are what they will not have any unpaired electrons the individual atoms right they don't have any magnetic moment and such materials right they will exhibit what diamagnetism but the question is if they are not having any unpaired electrons means inside that substance right it is like there are no small small these magnets nothing is there but the question is why they are repelled by the field why they are being repelled by the field so this we will uh, be able to understand in little bit more detailed manner when we go to uh, uh, one more chapter that's basically the uh, chapter that comes uh, next which is the electromagnetic induction but here right let's just see that if uh, we have uh, an atom where there is a electron which is uh, say for example anti clockwise there is one more electron which is what clockwise these are the two electrons of that orbit now when we apply this uh, field right we are applying a magnetic field generally we are applying a magnetic field as a result of it what happens is one of these electrons will be able to move faster and the other electron will be able to move what slow so normally both the electrons will be going with the same speed but as a result of this applied electric uh, supplied field rate magnetic field what is going to happen one of these electrons will be starting to move faster other will be little bit slowing down why this happens we will understand in the next chapter the idea of electromagnetic induction but as a result of this right what is going to happen is inside the substance right there will be a field produced and the field produced right we will call it as what the field because of magnetization right the field produced inside this apply this field produced inside will be exactly in opposite direction the field produced inside is what opposite direction that's why the chi value is what small but negative the chi value is what small but negative so this is you know what is the reason for the diamagnetic materials to be repelled by the applied magnetic field so just to conclude it guys why this diamagnetic comes we have substances where uh, the atoms of the substances right they are having no unpaired electrons first means what all the electrons are paired but if you apply some electric uh, some, some magnetic field means what is going to happen in the uh, orbit if you see the two electrons one is going clockwise other is going anti clockwise because of the applied field right what is going to happen is one of them will start moving faster other will slow down we will see the reason for this in the electromagnetic induction chapter but here just understand that one of them is going to go fast other is going to go slow and as a result of it right there will be an magnetization or uh, field produced and this will be exactly in the opposite direction but small value that's why you know the chi value will be what negative for the diamagnetic substances and uh, as a result right what is going to be happening for them these uh, diamagnetic substances they will be repelled by the applied magnetic field so they will be moving from where to where they will move from strong field place to weak field place the diamagnetic materials they will be moving from where to where strong field region to weak field region clear guys and uh, this is one more area especially in uh, uh, medical entrance examinations uh, they will ask these examples guys they will ask suddenly you know which of the following is not a diamagnetic so we have to look at these examples carefully so what are the examples of the diamagnetic substances bismuth copper lead silicon nitrogen gas at stp water sodium chloride all of them are what they are all diamagnetic substances okay so just to make a note of the list guys so these you know examples of the materials are also important so similarly when we go and discuss about uh, the uh, paramagnetic or when we go and discuss about the ferromagnetic in those cases also right the examples will be what important in all these cases the examples of these uh, substances will be what guys important for us okay so this is about what this is about the diamagnetism the other type is a uh, paramagnetism but you now probably what we'll do is uh, we will uh, 
conclude with this uh, diamagnetism today. So in diamagnetism, right, uh, we have the uh, very special case of this diamagnetism which is exhibited by a special category of substances which are called as superconductors. Okay. So what are the superconductors? These are typically these metals which are cooled below some low temperature. So low temperature means it will not be like you know uh, 25 degrees centigrade or, or I mean you know uh, 30 degrees centigrade. It will be very very low temperature and this temperature is by the way called as a critical temperature. What is the temperature called as critical temperature? So we have these substances when they are cooled to these very low temperatures right below the critical temperature they exhibit what we call as perfect conductivity that's why they are called as what superconductors an ideal superconductor right its uh, resistance should be equal to zero that is what is an ideal superconductor so these substances right the superconductors are examples of uh, the materials that can show perfect conductivity as well as perfect magnetism perfect conductivity means what the resistance is zero Perfect diamagnetism means what? Diamagnetism means they will be, I mean, no, not allowing the field lines to go through it because we have seen the diagram, right? What is happening? They are basically repelling the field lines to go through it. Means uh, perfect diamagnetic substance means what? It should repel all these fields away. So the total field inside must be equal to what? Zero. What is the total field inside formula, guys? Mu naught into mu r into h. What is mu r? mu naught into 1 plus chi into h means what the chi value should be equal to minus 1 and the mu r value mu r value must be equal to what 0 that is what will be the characteristic of an perfect diamagnetic substance so these superconductors right they are supposed to execute what both perfect conductivity as well as perfect diamagnetism and uh, this combined effect that they show right is called as what Messner effect what is the combined effect that these uh, superconductors show? It's called as what guys? The Messner effect and uh, this is exhibited below the critical temperature. This uh, is exhibited what guys? Below the critical temperature. So superconductors right, they are uh, the examples of substances that show perfect uh, conductivity as well as perfect diamagnetism. Okay. So we'll uh, hold uh, with this uh, diamagnetism discussion guys today and in tomorrow's class right, we will be starting with uh, the other type of uh, magnetic materials. So what are the other type of magnetic materials we said we will see? We will talk about the paramagnetic substances and we will talk about the ferromagnetic substances and uh, again you know see uh, some more discussions on uh, how or rather you know uh, why we need to select materials of different uh, magnetic properties in sp some special applications. So whenever we have some specific applications right. We can't use each and every material the way we want. Like say for example, we want to create a permanent magnet. We require a material with some properties. We need to have a material for uh, making the core of an electromagnet. So we will require a material with some special properties. So those things also we will discuss in tomorrow's class. So see you tomorrow guys.